Automotive guys, micron reading, micron gauge. Let me explain this to you a little bit. I've had so many people contact me either through email, text messaging, uh, phone, or as subscribers about purchasing the field piece. They've purchased their field piece, their first digital gauge, or the micron meter, and that's why I'm gonna dwell on micron meter. I'm gonna give you a really short synopsis of how it works. I'm not giving you the full ex explanation. I'm gonna tell you to go to Jim Bergman's website uh, or True Tech Tools or AccuTools and watch his hour long video all about setting up and using um, micron gauge. And you'll notice to do it properly, you're not supposed to do it through refrigerant uh, hoses because they are your biggest limiting factor that will cause you a lot of problems and all these connections and the restriction of the size of the hoses. But I do understand you guys in automotive, many are limited in funds and you want this, you can consider this your gateway drug into learning and using a micron gauge. Might be a little frustrating if you have a little leak somewhere in one of your connections, but you will definitely learn by your mistakes or get very frustrated. Uh, I'm just telling you that up right front, right up front. So your micron level, what you wanna to get to is not what you, well, what you read on your gauge while your pump is running is not your actual gauge reading, is not your micron gauge inside the system. Because when the micron sensor is located in the manifold, it is not in the system. And there is so much restriction from the hoses and the different connections and going through the valve and everything like that that this reading is much lower because it's closer to the source of the vacuum pump than what is actually inside the system. And it's when you turn off the vacuum, when you close this valve, we'll give you your full reading, which is called the vacuum decay and tell you whether you truly have a leak or you truly still have a lot of moisture there or refrigerant trapped into oil underneath the oil because moisture and refrigerant get trapped under the layer of oil and deep into the pores of the metal. Even metal is like a sponge, like wood. When you put wood in water, it floats, but if you leave it in there long enough, it starts absorbing the water and gets heavy and starts sinking. Moisture actually absorbs into the pores of even metal. And a micron meter is that sensitive, it could even measure that. So as you can see here, here was a little up blip. We were here at 100 and, uh, 159 microns right there then it jumped up to 300 and something then came back out that is like moisture or refrigerant bubbling out from under the deep puddles of oil within the system now what i've obtained is 200 and some microns but i'd like to shoot for in automotive 700 would be nice 500 would be really good uh, sometimes some cars were left open to the atmosphere so long and so much humidity got into the poe oil or pag oil that within one hour you're never going to remove all the moisture and you're never going to remove all the moisture anyway you'll reduce it which is a good thing but removing it all is not going to happen in the real world okay so let me explain to you here here i'm going to shut off the vacuum source and we're going to watch the vacuum decay and we'll be able to see it rise and then level out and it'll tr tell us our true state of moisture removal inside the system. Unfortunately, we are doing it through refrigerant hoses and any contamination of the oils that are in your hoses and the moisture that absorb will also be picked up with the micron gauge with you out here. I've done videos and Jim Bergman explains how to do the proper one hose or two hose method using ball valves and isolating the hoses out of your system and read directly off the system with a separate micron gauge. But you will advance there later. That costs more money and you gotta learn something different. And all modern automotive technicians who are graduating from using old style analog gauges and a couple hoses and stuff like that, you're already familiar with this setup. So let's get you used to it and learn something. At least something is better than nothing. Um, so let me kill it right here. I'm turning off the vacuum. I am now reading the vacuum of the system and you see it's going up right here. See it going up. Then you're going to see, you're seeing it starting to level off. 
Let me get you a little closer there. Let's see if we could, uh, you could see the highest reading that is bouncing. Okay, right now it just went from five, six, seven. And let's find out where it levels off at. Now, as long as it doesn't keep going up, you don't have a leak under vacuum. But looking for leaks under vacuum is a horrible way to look for leaks. Only if they're big leaks and leaks that will leak under vacuum. Because remember, the difference, the difference in pressure between the atmosphere and a deep vacuum is only 14.7 PSI. But you could pump a system up with nitrogen at 100 PSI or 200 PSI, and you can find that leak. Some leaks don't leak under vacuum, but they do leak under pressure. That's why vacuum is not the best method, but it is one method. It'll find certain types of leaks. Just like pressure all by itself in a static situation, that means with no pulsating, no heat, no vibration, static pressure all by itself will find some leaks, but it won't find other leaks. Sometimes you need a dynamic test. Sometimes you need a temperature change differential test. Sometimes some leaks will only leak on a raising pressure, but won't leak when they come back down and they hit a pressure they turn off. So there's so many scenarios. This is only one method. Now, do you see our level off mark now? Now we're starting to approach our true vacuum level. So we're somewhere out here approaching 700 microns. So if you wanted to be real good and go for the 500 microns after the vacuum decay test, this is the decay test. We let it, the vacuum decay up over a period of time and level off and we know what our true vacuum is because our vacuum pump has been isolated. So I'm gonna put this back on the vacuum some more because I wanna get it down to 500 microns if I can. And, um, and that's what I'll do. I'll repeat this test over until I hit 500 and go from there. You've seen me in some videos go and I've left vacuum pumps on for several hours or overnight and I just left it at the shop running and I come back the next day and it's down to 30 or 40 microns with the vacuum pump running and then I turn it off and then it goes up to like 110 microns. That's excellent. If you could do that, that's dynamite for the system. No moisture contamination uh, or into the parts per million. So I'll let you guys off here. Jim Bergman's, I'll, I'll make another video again because I have so many new subscribers who don't know who I recommend for instructors to go look about uh, moisture contamination, refrigerant contamination using vacuum pumps. But hey, you guys who got this equipment and you guys who got the Field Beast VP7, uh, VPX7 or one of the other models, you're on your way to becoming better. This proves you wanna get there, you wanna learn, you want to do better for your customers and become more efficient and more profitable. Uh, I'll give some more information about this. I just don't have the time. I, any of you old guys, you know I don't have the time. I don't do editing or nothing like that. I leave all my mistakes in my video, but I'll be re-releasing re some of the links on where to get more information about vacuum, vacuum gauges, vacuum pumps, vacuum, this three quarter inch silicone high vacuum rated hose. That makes all the difference in the world and many of you guys have purchased this hose and come back and talk, contact me and tell me what a difference it makes because it makes a difference. See you guys.